Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And how's it, guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is a view from my front yard. And this is also the 4th of July weekend. I am doing a voiceover in the evening time now. So in case you hear that sound in the background, everybody's letting off fireworks. Um... In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a recipe that some friends of mine taught me how to make eon eons ago. They are from Saudi Arabia. This is a classic Saudi Arabian side dish. You can eat it for breakfast, you can eat it anytime, as you like. And it's called Al Kalaya Al Nahal. And uh, the rough translation and what I lovingly refer to it as is have bread. It's a very simple dish and it's a nice dough that you pull apart and inside it has pook or cream cheese. Pook is just a different brand of cream cheese um, that's sold room temperature um, on the shelves and you can find it in any Arabic store. They all have it. They all carry it. So. But you can also use um, cream cheese like I have. So that is what I'm going to share. And I'm also going to share a book and some skincare. And who knows? Sky's the limit. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And how's it, guys? I'm not exactly sure where I am going to incorporate this segment into my vlog, so I just wanted to greet everybody again, inshallah. And I wanted to share this book with you. I've had this, this was a gift from a friend of mine a long time ago, and it's called Index of Quranic Topics. As you can see, this has been translated into English. And it is a really good and useful book, I find. I'll show you Publishing House. And just FYI, I'm originally from here in Virginia, the DC Burbs. Lovingly, we call it that, the DC Burbs. It's just some slang <laughs> that has developed in the last, oh, five, six years ago. So in any event, that all that means is burbs neighborhood the suburbs right and it we live right outside of washington dc so this book was published by amana publishing for the ifta office royal embassy of saudi arabia here right here in washington dc so that's nice in case some of you don't know my husband is from saudi arabia um so um but I was given this book way before I got married because actually, I guess we'll, we're going to do a little trivia about me. Um, I became a Muslim and then later on I got and I accepted a proposal and got married. So in any event, that's just how that turned out to be. But I digress. So back to this book. Um, it has a nice table of contents. Um, I understand a lot of Arabic because I have a lot of friends. Um, and obviously, of course, my husband. Um, so I can pretty much understand a conversation content of it. I am not fluent. I am not a sheikh, which means scholar. I just want to share this book with you folks in case you're interested because I find this really book really helpful so inshallah I hope it benefits somebody out there so you can look up anything you want much like the title of this book indicates and you can find it very quickly and easily in case you don't know where it's located in the actual mushaf itself so and it's in English. 
it's been translated so that is very nice so for example divine guidance this is a good one page 315 and then it has all different subtopics Allah and the believers Allah guides those who are God -called. and want to be guided Allah is nearer to man than his own jugular vein. So let's go over here to page 315. We'll find it. Let's see. And I'm just going to use this bookmarker to keep it on the page. Inshallah. And it's a little bee. Really cute. Perfect segue. I'm making alkalaya and nahal bihad bread right today. If you don't know where a topic is located, it's great because you can just flip through the index and find whatever topic you're looking for. So here we go Divine Guidance, Allah and the Believers. Allah guides those who are God conscious and, and wants want to be, guided. to be guided. So right here, obviously this is page 315. And this, in case you were unfamiliar, is Surah, which means chapter 8, Ayah 29. Ayah means verse. So chapter and verse, Surah and Ayah. Okay? And then it'll actually give you the ayah in English. O you who O you who believe, if ye fear Allah, he will grant you a criterion to judge between right and wrong. Remove you from all evil that may afflict you and forgive you. And Allah is the Lord of grace unbounded. Sadakallah Allah. So it's just beautiful. I mean, you know, it just is. SubhanAllah. So I really appreciate that they put this book together and translated it for us English speakers. Um, and then here is another one, 1976. And Allah doth, doth advance in guidance those who seek guidance and the things that endure. Good deeds are best in the sight of thy Lord as rewards and best in respect of their eventual returns. Sadaqallahu alim. Which means this is the truth from Allah. So I could go on and on and on and just keep going and reading this to you because this is just wonderful. Um, but you get the basic concept of what it is. And not only can you look up any topic, but it also in the back has a nice, here it is, glossary. Look, and well, before we go there, plants, vegetation, and fruit. Plants and vegetation. I love plants. So that might be of interest to some people. So whatever topic you're searching for, you will find it for sure. And then it has stories of past generations. So the Sahaba has a section on that. And then what I was looking for is this, the glossary of some common Islamic terms. So this, if you're brand new to Islam or reading the Quran and things of that nature, this is great because you can just go through this glossary and write down, you know, the terms. Like for me, what I do when I'm learning something is I write things down on just basic index cards and I find that very helpful. These are just three by five index cards. I love lavender, it's my favorite color. You can have white index cards, whatever. And then if it's something larger, I will use these um, five by eight index cards. Okay, this just so happens to have 
all the colors, well, some colors. Lavender's in there, too, of course, and pink. <laughs> anyway, so if it's a larger topic and something larger, because you can see how big these are compared to your regular 3x5 index card. Maybe that is easier to see. Um, as you can see there, then this will accommodate all the writing. So what I do when I'm learning something is I will write down, let's say I want to learn more terms, different ways, a few different ways of how I do things. And I memorize quite a and bit. And I am definitely a lover of analog. But I find that using flashcards is so simple and just easy. You can have any paper. It doesn't have to be an index card if you don't want to. Any paper will do. Um, but just write down the word in English and then the meaning. And then you can write in Arabic and in transliterated Arabic. And then you recognize the word like when you're reading the Quran. And that'll help you to learn. And learn conversational Arabic too. Like Allah. I recognize the word written in Arabic. The repetition of the flashcard system will help one easily identify any Arabic term more quickly, and I find this very useful. That's how I do it. I just basically, if I want to memorize something, I'll put it down on my index. And I'm not um, perfect at all by any means with my um, pronunciation, but I try, inshallah. Really, I do try. And then here is a list of references. So this book is really nice. I really like it. So I just wanted to share that with you folks. Just a quick little glimpse. And ooh, here is the introduction to the Quran. Um, what is this? Tashkil is the name for the signs indicating the vowels in Arabic scripts. That's helpful. These sign, signs, I should say, help determine the correct pronunciation of the words and avoid mistakes. So basically your tajweed. And these are some of the rules. So they've even included that in here as well. So there's a whole plethora of things you know and yes it's just a brief introduction so it has a little bit of everything in it and it's just a good book so inshallah if i can find this book i definitely will list it down below and may allah reward those who you know publish these books and my friends that give them to me mashallah jazakallah khairan um, I always make du'a and supplication for for all Muslims and for Muslims that I know, you know, specifically. So, that anyway, that is my little share, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Assalamu alaikum, masalama. Hey you guys, I just wanted to come on here and just show you this recipe. Also, I have two out of the three recipes from my previous video I need to put away. I still need to write one up, which is fine. Main attractions. I'm going to add the shorba to that section. In case you're not familiar, I have a few sections made up. Um, accoutrement, delicacies, le petit déjeuner, which is breakfast, bread, 
um, in some other spare sections there, but I think I will put the chickpea and chicken shorba recipe under main attraction. I love soup. That's what shorba means. It's soup. I have a couple of recipes that my family, and I mean my family when I was growing up, you know, eats. They eat this cube steaks. I never eat it, but, um, and roast beef dinner with gravy. I never eat that, but I had my mom, I had asked my mom over the years, this I do eat, chicken noodle soup, um, write out the recipes in her handwriting, which I keep in a separate spot because that's very meaningful for me. So, but that's what those are. I mean, for me, if I was to make cube steaks, I would have to add in vegetables and a lot of spice because that's how we eat. Now, kung pao chicken, I've been making that for many eons. It's very good. You know, um, my mom didn't really cook, but um, my older sister, she did the cooking and does the cooking <laughs> still. In any event, uh, so a Japanese lady, in case you're not familiar, I used to live in Hawaii, and a Japanese lady, my friend's mom, taught me how to cook. So this was one of the recipes, actually from Karu's daughter. She gave me this recipe. Karu is the name of the lady who taught me how to cook. I have all kinds of recipes. My stromboli, yum yum. I had to create this because um, I need my stromboli with turkey pepperoni or beef pepperoni, and they just don't sell it. So that's how that one came about. So this is the chickpea and chicken shorba soup recipe. And then I do have some extra pages set up. I like to just set it up with floral. Um, this is a Nautique, as you can see right here. It says Nautique um, binder on discs. This is the Happy Nietzsche Happy Planner sizing, which they call it something else on the Nautique website. But it's thicker and it accommodates the one and a half inch discs. And I like this size, so um, I took it out of my traveler's wallet and put it in here and then I just use the happy planner paper it's very thick it takes the fountain pen ink well I use a waterproof fountain pen ink I have many I have a few here's one of them the atramentus document ink black um I have a few a couple other ones as well Okay, so then delicacies, mom's fudge. This I do make occasionally. Fudge is very hard to make. In fact, <laughs> you really have to master it. Um, so occasionally I do make this, um, usually to give it away as gifts. Um, and I like peanut butter fudge too. I make that. Mango bread is delicious. Amish friendship bread. Kulolo, which is Hawaiian taro pudding. Malasadas. It's a Hawaiian thing. It's like a sugar donut. Malasadas. Hot malasadas. Tea cake. Italian pizzelles. Pecan balls. <laughs> Every time I look at certain recipes, I know exactly where and when and who and I just picture them in my mind's eye if you know what I mean. Homemade brownies. Butter mochi. Okay. And I don't have anything in the breakfast, do I? Oh yes I do. Cold overnight oatmeal. 
I'm just going over a few of them. I know I have some other ones in the front. This is delicious. Cold overnight oatmeal. You can use, um, you use Greek yogurt and skim milk. Well, I use skim milk because I don't want the extra fat. Um, sometimes I will use regular vitamin D milk. Um, old fashioned oats, Greek yogurt. And then I love blueberries in mine. So that's why I have it decked out with blueberries but you can put strawberries mango watermelon any fruit and you mix it all together and put it in the fridge overnight and it's ready it's so delicious in summer highly recommend that and if you're interested just i can let you do a screenshot so good and so simple one fourth cup uncooked old fashioned oats, one third cup skim milk, one fourth cup Greek yogurt, um, half a teaspoon of chia seeds, two teaspoons, uh, I use sugar free maple syrup, one fourth cup of blueberries. And then you can just put it in a like a half pint mason jar, mix it all up, and there you go. It's very refreshing and it's very filling. Keep you full all morning. Okay. This is the recipe that I did in this um, particular um, video. Okay, so I'm just going to add now my pita bread recipe. We did in the previous video. So this is the Alkalaya Al Naho, which I call beehive bread. It's like the cell, it roughly translates into that. It's like the cells of a hive, basically. And I will have this listed below in both Arabic and English. I could not list. In the previous video, I could not list the recipes in Arabic and English because it just wouldn't allow me to for the space. Because it was so much writing, you only have a limited amount of space. Um, so I just listed it in English. But you can scan texts and translate it. Here is the backside. But I will have this listed in Arabic and in, in English for you. It's super simple. My recipe is a lot larger, of course. So, because I'll just make it up and then at one stage after it's risen the, and activated the yeast, then after that, I just stick it in the freezer and then I'll pull it out when I wanna make it again. And then roll them out. You could also, um, sometimes I do it this way, where I'll just make it completely and then put it in the actual dish that I'm serving it in or that I'm baking it in and then cover it in parchment paper and a foil and then just stack them in the freezer. You can do it that way too or just make a small amount at once. But for the limited time and if you're busy and who isn't busy um that's just how I do it do things and how I cook it's just worked for us over the years because you know life is so busy so if you're working 12 16 hour shifts then you really don't have time much for anything else right so that way we can eat fresh homemade food and it's at the ready so it's basically homemade frozen food which is a lot better for your body so that's why i do it and i like enjoy cooking baking and everything so yeah this is a little bit of a longer um Older, if you're not familiar with the happy, it's called a happy Nietzsche size. Now they do have it. Um, 
the size. They have mini Happy Nietzsche. They have all different kinds of sizes. But I just prefer this size. It just is a nice size. I love it. And I have a lot of paper. And you can, you don't have to buy Happy Planner paper. You can just take a piece of paper to the measurements, and it's online. The measurements of the size of the paper are online. And then you use a Levenger punch because that will mimic exactly the um, punches on the paper. And you can use any paper that you have, you know. So you don't have to specifically buy this paper. It's just I happen to have a lot of it. If you've watched my old videos, you'll know that. Or if you're an OG, as they say, <laughs> then you know I totally dig <laughs> this paper. I'm a paper person. Um, I like this for this purpose because the paper is thick. And other things I like to use, of course, my um, Tomoe River paper. It's much different. Very, very different. Uh, much thinner and everything. So, But anyway, there you go.
Oh, baby. 